hitting the jackpot to throwing down with a giant chicken. Peter's done absolutely everything to make us laugh. And what we have here is his top 10 most hilarious moments. Number 10, working at the Bolarama. Bolarama? Yes, we're open. Oh yes, we have a wide selection of balls that are way too heavy or have too small finger holes. No doubt about it, Peter has dished out more gut-busting moments than just about any other TV character in history. And among that comedy goldmine, this gem shines particularly bright. Yes, sir. All of the joysticks in the arcade are completely covered in pizza grease. No worries there. Maybe it's cause in under a minute he managed to list every quirky quirk that makes bowling, well, let's say distinctive. Saying what we've all thought at some point, but in a hilariously blunt way. Or maybe the humor lies in the fact that he happened to be working at the very place he was roasting. Oh, absolutely. There is always a group of teenagers throwing the ball real hard and scaring everyone. Whichever way you spin it, this is undeniably a genius moment. It's a torrent of jokes and references that'll hit home for anyone who's ever hit the lanes. Which, let's face it, it's pretty much all of us. There is no smoking, but we do let you smoke. Yes, it's all terrible. Come on down. Number 9. The Master of Sarcasm None of this makes any sense. Everyone got invitations from an anonymous source for a dinner in their honor when that's clearly not the case. Now we're here, where the hell's our host? In the episode, and then there were fewer. A wickedly fun spin on Agatha Christie's classic tales and hands down one of the show's top tier episodes. The Griffin gang gets caught up in the chaos as the mysterious dinner guests start dropping like flies. If you don't like America, why don't you get out? Yeah! To protest, okay? Yeah! Right smack in the middle of this madhouse, amidst all the craziness, our family decides it's prime time to make a daring escape. So everyone bolts toward the car. But as fate would have it, the weather pulled a dirty trick, completely wrecking their one shot at escaping. Yeah! And just when it felt like life and death were duking it out, our good old buddy Peter drops a zinger that, even to this day, stands tall as one of the most legendary gags in the show's history. Oh my god, Peter, back it up! Oh, really, Lois? I thought I might drive forward. I thought that, that might be a fun thing to do. Number eight, Peter Griffin. Peter, this, this, this is a detox clinic. You can't vacation here. Why not? This place is way better than a cruise. You should have seen it. I whipped this speed freak's ass at horseshoes today. The third season gem, The Thin White Line, dished out this epic plot line where Brian donned this police badge and dove headfirst into a cocaine addiction. Yeah, it's pretty twisted, but it also gave us this downright hilarious Peter moment. Trade you dish for your cupcake. A few moments later. What? It was just carpet fresh. I'm on your side. We got poor Brian battling demons at a rehab center, while Peter tries to milk the benefits of being there for all they're worth. Things were going just fine till he got busted and had to rely on his cunning. Can you even begin to picture how that played out? I've been observing your behavior and I don't think you're an addict. I think you're an idiot. What's your name? Uh, my, my name? Uh... Uh. No doubt Brian's journey was mind-blowing, taking us on that wild ride through his addiction problem. But who could forget our good friend? P. T. Griffin. P. Uh. Uh. T. Uh. Uh. Griffin. Yeah, yeah, Peter Griffin. Ah, oh, crap. Number seven, Teenage Peter. Principal Shepard? That's right. And it's just first name, Shepard, now that you've had me fired and I have no income. And now I'm living in my car. Family Guy is such a ridiculously awesome and funny show that sometimes its absolute best moments sneak up on you in the side plots of certain episodes. But when every storyline's a comedic gem, who's to say what's the main act and what's the side hustle? Someone drew a penis on my car. Couldn't have been me. I don't even know what penises look like because I'm not gay. Never even seen one. You don't have a penis? I do, I just don't look at it because I'm not gay. In this case, the show plays with the classic trope of inviting someone to crash at your place after you've basically ruined their life. And that's exactly what went down with the school's principal after he fat shamed poor Chris right in front of the whole school. Now, if it was a vagina, I'd say you have your man. I've seen three of those. Whoa, 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 three? Deeds, dad. Your mom. Nice. Your sister and my aunt. 
She fell out at a casket at a funeral, and a dress came up. With the school principal in the house, it's like Peter's inner teenager sprang back to life, and that unleashed a wave of epic moments that we just can't reminisce about without bursting into laughter. Wait, who drew this dong on my desk? Not me. I wouldn't even know how to draw one. I've only seen two. Mine and my uncle's at his funeral. He died with my aunt in a car crash. Remember her from earlier with the vagina? Number six, the Griffins hit the jackpot. We're running seriously low on cash right now. Well, there you go, Lois. That's the answer right there. We'll just win the lottery. In fact, I'm gonna go buy my winning ticket right now. Even one of the top-notch comedy shows on TV like Family Guy couldn't resist diving headfirst into one of the world's most legendary comedic scenarios. You guessed it, the Griffins won the lottery. Yes, we won the lottery! I'm getting a penis, butler. Sir? All right, buttle my penis. Buttle it! As you might have guessed, winning that lottery was a real game changer for the whole family. But it hit Peter like a ton of bricks. Suddenly becoming a millionaire turned him into a total loose cannon, even with his lifelong buddies. Giving us viewers, though, an uproarious episode to remember. Peter, my God, what the hell are you wearing? It's a solid gold tuxedo, Lois. I had to fight three rappers down at the nonsense store for this. Just watching Peter live in the high life as a millionaire with his newfound swagger was pure awesomeness. But just like in any comedy where someone strikes it rich, it wasn't long before they blew it all, leaving us to wonder how on earth are they gonna bounce back from that one. What do we do now? Well, seems like our only hope is the lottery. Holy we won twice and we're right back here again. Number five, Electric Man. What are those? Oh, that's a pair of red flannel feety pajamas. See, they've got a flap that opens up in the back. Are you telling me I could be pooping and warm? Exactly. In this epic show, our favorite characters always find a way to steal the spotlight. And this time, it was Peter who stumbled upon, almost like fate had a hand in it, a pair of pajamas that little did he know were about to turn his life upside down. Well, at least for a few days. Lois, don't get alarmed, but I think I might be Jesus. Kneel before Christ! Ah! Just when we thought the joke was all about Peter flaunting his jammies everywhere, even at work, the episode throws us a curveball, gifting him a brand new, utterly unique, and incredibly annoying superpower. And no, this great power definitely didn't come with great responsibility. Dad! I am not your dad. I am Electric Man. No doubt about it, Electric Man, Peter's alter ego, will go down in history as one of the, shall we say, most irksome and side-splitting superheroes in the world. Who knows, maybe one day we'll cross paths with him again on the mean streets of Koha. Peter, if you shock me, I swear to God I'm leaving you. You'll have to find me first, Lois. I'm gonna try the Quonset hut. Ah! <laughs> I was in the bathroom. Number four, Peter versus Ernie. Oh yeah, and uh, that nice chicken outside gave me this coupon. I'm sorry, this is expired. You son of a- In the world of comedy, every leading character is practically required by law to have a nemesis who's equally as absurd. And in true Family Guy fashion, it's no surprise that Peter's arch enemy turns out to be none other than a giant chicken. This rivalry between the two is not only utterly senseless, which makes it even more awesome, but it's also extremely violent. Whenever these two clash, you can bet chaos and destruction are on that menu. Ernie's graced the show with several memorable appearances, including a cameo in the past and a showdown where time itself went into reverse. And with every single appearance, we couldn't help but crack up in sheer delight. Number three, Peter versus the stairs. No, he's just got a splinter. Oh, my poor baby. It's cause these old stairs are just falling apart. It's not just the stairs. Meg has spent two days pinned under a roof beam. Let's just focus on the stairs, Brian. This side-splitting moment from the 10th season gym, The Blind Side, was so wild, it became something of a running gag on the show. Yeah, we're talking about the never-ending battle between Peter and the stairs. Ah, ow, ow, ah, go! After poor Stewie got a splinter, Lois decided to swap out the old house stairs for gleaming new ones. Who would have guessed that these stairs could turn into Peter's new personal arch nemesis? Let me tell you. It looks like the stairs have a leg up in this battle. Ah! 
Maybe it ain't all uproarious watching Peter's stairway mishaps once or even twice, but the ongoing battle he wages during the whole episode just to get downstairs is too cool to leave off our list, right? Hey guys, I'm just gonna, just gonna take this. Thank you. Number two, Peter needs a Jew. I swear, sometimes I feel like I'm married to a child. You better watch who you're calling a child, Lois, because if I'm a child, then you know what that makes you? A pedophile. Peter isn't just the head honcho of the Griffin family. He's the undisputed star of the show, the ultimate family guy. And if you think we're going overboard with the hype, just wait until you dive into this absolute gem of an episode. Lois thinks I'm bad with money. She's got a point, Peter. You're the white version of a black guy who's not good with his money. So when you wish upon a Weinstein might have left its mark with that killer musical number I Need a Jew, which, let's face it, is freaking awesome. But what truly seals the deal is Peter himself, dishing out a non-stop parade of laughs throughout the entire wacky story. Hebrew people I've adored, even though they killed my lord. With Peter Griffin in his prime, a plot that's off the charts bonkers, and a slew of jokes aimed at the Jewish community, all served up, family guy style, this episode easily snags a spot among the all-time greats in the show's history. No doubt about it. They better not be expecting us to give money, because I already gave a church last Sunday, and I'm pretty sure it all goes to the same gun. And number one, the couch gag. Oh boy, great idea, princess, diving into a pile of garbage. Hey, when we get out of here, maybe you can show me around your home planet of Alderaan. Oh, too soon. In today's world, Family Guy's renowned worldwide for its sharp wit, twisted humor, and its uncanny knack for parroting and roasting just about anything on the planet. A big part of that fame comes from their epic Star Wars tribute kicked off by the legendary double episode, Blue Harvest. Somebody threw out a whole couch and it's in great shape. Yeah, you put a little Febreze on that, scrub it out a little bit, look great in your apartment. An absolute amazing parody. Stuffed to the brim with brilliant gags where every character from the show dons a Star Wars persona, resulting in pure comedic gold. And in the midst of this laugh-inducing onslaught, there's one moment that shines like a supernova. Yes, it's the iconic couch gag. You know what? I, I, I know we have a dangerous job to do here, but I'm taking this. I'm taking this couch. Watching Peter's hilariously inept attempt to maneuver a couch during an epic escape is a comedic masterpiece that is simply unparalleled. We're willing to bet that no self-respecting fan of the show would ever dare to dispute its well-deserved top ranking. Ah, oh, for crap! Oh, it's wedged. It's wedged. All right. Okay. All right. You know what? It's not going anywhere. Let's just take off. We'll deal with it later. All right. You get in the cockpit, and I'll I'll just I'll hang on to this thing as we go. Thanks for watching, you awesome people. Please be sure to subscribe and like the video for more Family Guy content. And if you're still frisky, why don't you check out Family Guy 10 times they went too far. Shown on your screen right now, cuz it's awesome!